Welcome back. In today's video, I'll show how to add some basic error handling to our web application. In the previous videos, I handled errors by simply returning from the handler when an error occurred. That was only to avoid adding unnecessary complexity because these videos are mostly meant to cover one topic at a time. But simply returning from the handler means that, from a user perspective, an error results in a blank page with no explanation, which isn't very user friendly. Instead of doing that, I'd like to at least return a different HTTP status code with an error message. Also, for the login and registration pages, we can give the users a more meaningful response when they fill out the form incorrectly. Let's get started by opening the code we have so far. The first situation where I ignored an error was here. See, this command gets this comments list from Redis, and if there's an error, it just returns from the handler here, which is going to give the user a blank page. Instead of doing that, let's at least return a proper HTTP status code, which in this case I'll use 500, which is the internal server error status code. So we'll write header HTTP status internal server error. And then since it's most likely going to be a human visiting this page, we should probably include some actual text. So we'll write internal server error. So the web browser will get this 500 status code, and the user is going to see this internal server error message. The next situation where I ignored an error was just below here. And in this case, I didn't even return the error from the function. So let's go ahead and add that line. See, in this case, if this push to the comments list fails, we're going to want to return an error to the user, because otherwise they might think that their comment went through. And that's not a very friendly way to handle this. Basically, I'll just copy this entire chunk of code so that when an error occurs, they get this internal server error message, and the handler just returns instead of redirecting them back to the main page. Because before, if this failed for whatever reason, they would go straight to the main page where all the comments are, but their comment wouldn't be there. This definitely seems like a better way to handle the error. Now if we scroll down a little bit further to the login post handler, there's another situation where an error could occur. But in this case, there are actually two errors that might happen that should have different responses. So the first error is that maybe Redis is just down for whatever reason, and this command doesn't go through. And that's going to be our internal server error response. But there's another situation where if the user hasn't registered, this username, the bcrypt hash, isn't going to be here in the database. And Redis will actually return a no value. So we want to handle these in two different ways. If the user just hasn't registered yet, then I think it's OK to return an unknown user error message to the user. But if it's a database issue, then we should do the actual internal server error status code. So to handle this, first I'm going to say if the error equals redis.nil. And that's what happens if the Redis database returns a nil value for this hash. So if this happens, we're going to return the login template. so that they get the login page again. But I'm going to pass some data to this template and say unknown user. Let's remove the old bad error handling. Now if we go over to this login template, right up here, I'll add if they passed some data to it, a div. We'll give it the class name error, just so we can style this a little bit differently later. And in it, we'll put whatever data I pass to it. So if I pass that 
uh, unknown user string to this template, then it's going to leave this div on the top that says, you know, unknown user here. And that's really all we need to give the user some informative feedback while they're logging in. So then the next part is if that database error happened, like if Redis was down or something, then we'll want to do an else if error is not nil. So there was some error that wasn't this Redis dot nil case. Then we'll do the normal error handling we did up here. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. Oh, another catch is if we're rendering this template here, we should also return there so that it doesn't try to do anything else after that. The next error situation is right below this. And in this case, the error happens if the password that the user just entered to log in, if the hash of that doesn't match, match the hash from user registration, then this error happens, which means that they entered the wrong password. So instead of some kind of internal server error or whatever, we're going to do exactly like we did if the user hasn't registered. And we're going to return that login page again, but pass some data to it. In this case, we'll just say invalid login, which is slang for you entered the wrong password. The last case where something might have gone wrong, if we scroll down a bit, we have this error. Um, this error might happen if this bcrypt hash function failed, which would probably only be because of the cost being invalid. And in this case, we're using the default cost. But we'll still handle this error just in case. And it should be an internal server error. There's another situation where Redis could have failed here when we're adding the user. Um, we should probably handle that error too. And it'll also be an internal server error. This seems like a good point to go ahead and test everything real quick. So let's open up the terminal and start the server with go run main.go as always. Hopefully this won't fail. Oh, everything looks good. So we'll open up the browser and go to our local host 8080. We get the login page because we're not logged in. Let's go ahead and try to log in with a username that hasn't been registered yet. So I'll just misspell my name. And we'll type in password. We should probably make this an actual password field. We can do that in another video when we clean things up or add more style. But our error works. We get unknown user. Um, we did register with Davy in the last video. So let's use Davy, but enter in the wrong password. And invalid login. Then just to make sure that it does actually work when we enter it in correctly, Davy and password does take us to our comment page. So everything appears to be working so far. Now I'll go ahead and check to make sure that we didn't break our comment submission. So it still works. And it does still work. The last thing I want to try is to go back to the terminal stop the server with control C and then I want to stop the Redis server real quick. And then restart our Go server. Now if we go back to the browser and try to just load this page, yes, we get internal server error, and that's exactly what we want. Hopefully this video gives you an idea of how to add basic error handling to web applications. In the next video, I'll show how to add middleware to request handlers to make it easier to reuse code 
and to add better access control to different endpoints. Bye!